Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and showing up. Today, I have a special guest, Addo. He's one of my longtime industry friends. He's very tech forward thinking. He owns a tech company here within the real estate space. And I um, also myself, I'm just all about marketing and technology for real estate. And I always thought of artificial intelligence, AI, kind of like those chat bots that we used to use to, to convert. And it it was gimmicky. I'm like, this is kind of garbage. It makes me look stupid. Uh, this is how I felt about artificial intelligence. Up until a couple days before Christmas, I started playing with um, this one called Chat GPT, which we're going to cover today. And it blew my mind. It was to it was my equivalent of like we're witnessing electricity being invented. Like this is our yeah. generation's big big thing is going to be what just happened within the last couple months. Um, so artificial intelligence pretty much doubles in capacity every two years. And in my opinion, it hit that tipping point where it is now almost like a real thing. Like we're actually talking to a real thing. I know we're not, but it, it has the um, ability to have a conversation with you as if it was a real human. And because of that, you can ask it to create things, to do things in a human fashion, and then it will spit back the results for you. So I'm going to um, share my screen for just a second. Awesome. Can we actually do one thing, Dan, before we maybe get started, just to ask the group in a poll, do we have the ability to poll on Zoom? Just to ask, like, how many people have currently used ChatGPT at all? Like, have you at all tried it? Just to kind of get a sense for what's happening. Easiest, so far. yeah. In the in the comments, just say yes, yes, no, no. Oh, okay. That's so mostly up. yes, uh, no, one no, two no's, three, four, five. I can guarantee you, all those no's at the end of this are going to be hard yeses because um, I honestly was throwing curveballs at this oh, wow. to try and so many break. people haven't. Wow. Good. You guys are wow. in for a treat. Your jaws are going wow. to be dropped by the end of this, for sure. Um, the, one of the other things that I discovered was the artificial intelligence creating images. And um, so I'm going to show you guys a couple examples of this before we get into the chat GPT stuff. Share this. Desktop one. So, Addo, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So these are images of... Um, let me open one up here. This is just one example. I, I use the same phrase. Um, I, I said a boy and his dog sledding down a snowy hill. That I thought that would be like a very hard thing for a computer to take and say, okay, I can make you something. So, Danny, so, just just because you and I know kind of what this is, I don't think 99% of these people have no idea what you're talking about. Like mid journey. Oops. Yeah, so it's like, but it's like voice, it's it's text to images, right? So it's like you tell it what to create, and it just creates it for you. Exactly. So I told it to create a boy and his dog sledding down a snowy hill, but then I changed the, the, the framing of it. So look at all these images of a boy and his dog sledding down a snowy hill. I mean, not all, this one I asked it to do it in Van Gogh style. <laughs> And it actually made like a little baby Van Gogh sliding down a hill. I asked it to do Where's Waldo style. I asked it to do um, like a Disney anim animated style. This one is, um, who's the guy that creates like uh, Edward Scissorhands and um, Nightmare Before Christmas? Right. Um, who's that director? Anyways, I forget his name, but I asked it to do it in that style. And it did. I like it actually is as simple as typing up an email and it, it creates these images that we can use for our blog posts, for our stories, for our, our YouTube thumbnails, like anything you want. You basically don't have to ask a designer to create for you anymore. You can just use this tool. It's called MidJourney. So I'll go to MidJourney to show you guys. MidJourney.com is it looks really nerdy and it actually is. It was actually complicated because you have to use uh, have a MidJourney account and you have to have a Discord account. And I'm going to have a right. whole webinar specifically on how to set all that up and how to create it. But I just basically I, I was like a real person. I just went to YouTube and watched other people on how they did it. And once I got it all set up, I'll actually do one right now. So. OK, imagine. Well, let's ask, let's ask them what we want 
what we should do. Yeah. Anybody want to comment and say, in hey, what comments, should we create? So in the as, comment as, section, yeah. I want to hear uh, what your favorite thing to do was when you were a child and one of your favorite animals and your favorite place on earth. Ooh, and I want to like try this. and combine the three of these to see if we can create some cool things. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so chat, 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 chat. While they're chatting, I'll get it started. Addo, what was your favorite thing to do when you were a kid? Oh, man. Uh, sledding. It truly was sledding. I used to, uh, I, I loved it as, as a child, child. So this, this goes back. We're pre Canada. I used to love sledding because we didn't have a lot of snow. Okay. Oh, hold on. Oh, wow. These are coming in way too quick. Yeah. That's awesome, man. You guys are definitely, I think, I said, think if we imagine a boy yeah. playing in the, in the beaches of Southern Italy in the style of Monet. Oh my okay. God. There you go. Okay. Try that one. <laughs> like what? Okay. Imagine. And while Danny's doing this, I want to actually just say something with respect to copyright. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, hey, can I actually use this from a copyright perspective? So a law has been put out by both in Canada and in states that says AI generated content cannot be copyright. So you have whatever is created, you can really use it in your own work um, without having to worry about copyright. Double check with a lawyer course as always but that's that's what i've uh read and what i've heard and what i've uh gotten so that's so i don't know the monet style too well i don't know how accurate this is but uh here it is in 30 seconds um a boy playing in the beaches of southern italy in the style of monet and it, it it's what it does is it spits out four images and you're like oh damn i really like this top one and i actually do really like this top one right here so if i so like that here's what here's yeah so here's one oh, go ahead go ahead i was gonna say might maybe one that uh, more people could uh figure out what what it is uh play uh so street fighter arcade games uh and then dogs so the he like used to like playing street fighter arcade games and then dogs were his favorite pet Ooh, that's gonna be dogs playing street fighter video games <laughs> oh that's and now really some of the a lot of these are real estate agents are like okay but yeah this is a real novelty cool tool but how do we use it in real estate um okay so i'll show you an example of how we used it in real estate i had uh, one of my clients um was doing a client appreciation event and uh he said it's a skating ice rink party but some of the children are going to be too small that they can't go on the ice rink what what are the things that we can do for them and i'm like well why don't we create a coloring book so look at this coloring book all these images that we got in a matter of seconds now he has a template that i created on canva for him but this image right here i didn't have to like find it i just told it what i wanted i could say um a uh, uh, black and white line art style of a home during halloween and it would actually create that for you in 30 seconds we got um here's i the... wonder i wonder if you could add on to that to say uh make it a coloring book where where um you know a 10 year old could actually color so that it might make the spaces of that big big bigger so that yeah you cross. could yeah you absolutely you could you say you could um then say with bold here i'll do it right now so um imagine coloring book style of a house during during christmas black and white old lines. lines so here's that one of the boy playing on the beaches in southern italy in the style of monet it gave us four options and i like that first one so what i did was i hit v1 for a variation of this first image and then it created four versions that are all slightly a little bit different and i'm glad it did because the fourth one is the winner i, I definitely really like that fourth one so then i'm going to say the fourth one i want to upscale it and now it's creating a high-res version of that that i can download and use 
on my blog, my social media. Here's the dogs that are playing uh, Street Fighter. I don't know how well that represented the term we were looking for. Oh, here's the the bold houses. So I I'd be like, oh, I have, damn, see how good they are, man. Like the, yeah, it, it creates cool. it in seconds. It's wild. We use this for um, our blog titles. Sorry, our blogs. The images hey, for our blogs. Do you have five minutes? Our can you come here? I just media. want to show you something. And um, okay, so let me go back to this for a second. I want to zoom out. So I was trying to throw it curveballs because this is um, a book I want to write for a child, and uh, now I have all the art for the book. Like, look at these. It looks like a toy. Like that, I actually asked it to make a toy, and it made the toy. If I go back to Discord, here's the high res version of that photo. I mean, that's very cool. Stunning. That is really cool. So, um, Mid Journey is kind of like a gimmick, kind of. It, it's more entertainment factor. It's not something real estate agents are going to use on a daily basis. But if you are in the need of creating, here, let me do another one of, um, I, I did a couple examples pre-done last night to show you. Okay, so there's always a national day, national day of donuts, national day of <laughs> every single day has a national day. So I just typed it, typed out national donut day and it, it created this. These are really cool looking donuts, man. Like if you wanted to yeah. have a, a post a day, you could just post about whatever the national thing. Look at these images, uh, a dream book corner made of wood surrounded by nature outside who, who and, wants to live so, there yeah that, that's stunning man and the, the the hardest part of i think this danny is, is like just setting it up so that you could actually use the discord to be able to generate the images yeah. that's really the hardest part after you've done that it is it is crazy easy to actually do like danny's done here you could create these images so that is really truly the hardest thing and this is not chat gpt at all this is like a different software that's being used to actually generate generate these images yeah we're going to get into the chat gp i just wanted while people are still loading on i wanted to like have uh something easy and to digest at first um so here i i searched uh black modern kitchen and it gave me four options and i'm like well i like them all but anyways i, I would choose this bottom right one and then i flipped it and said a white modern kitchen and it gave me a white modern kitchen. So now I could create every week, I could do a social media post of like this or that modern home or country cabin, uh, swimming pool or lake, black kitchen versus white kitchen. So you could have like ongoing social media content uh, at the press of a button. And all this stuff looks really, really good. So I'm not going to totally get in mid journey um is the tool that i use for this i am going to create a whole webinar just specifically on the prompts the commands setting it up i really just wanted to use this for entertainment factor to show you like how how interesting it is that we can literally type whatever we want and then it, it spits out the images for us so let me see i'll, I'll do one more um Somebody says, uh, playing hockey with a cheetah in the Serengeti. All right. So it's not like this is searching the internet for these images. It's just making the images. Yeah. Has anybody, while Danny's doing this, has anybody actually played with Mid Journey and played with grading images? at all in the chat say yes or no all right so can only yet no uh david of course saw your pictures of yourself <laughs> and you could writing at dusk yeah well, this is one of those things that you could also upload a picture of yourself while you're given an image of a picture of yourself and tell it to remake it as somebody so I don't know if you've seen those funky images on, uh, there was an app that actually did it, but you could you could do that inside of here as well. <laughs> this one didn't work out too well. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Anyways. That's pretty cool though. That's, I mean, a cheetah playing hockey. <laughs> so, and what's cool about this is um, the possibilities are endless for your social media. You know what I mean? This is what I like about it. it it's like going to make it a lot easier for us to create content because at the, as easy it is for you to type up an email 
you can have the images spit back to you on a rolling basis. So, okay, I'm going to flip it over to you to share your screen and we'll hop on over to chat GTP. This was more of like a little entertainment, like look how cool this is, but most real estate agents aren't actually going to be setting up a discord and, and going through all that. So I'm going to do a whole nother webinar for the agents that want to get nerdy about it and, and play with this. But um, chat GPT, I believe draws are going to be dropped at the end of this webinar and most people are going to see the use for it. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Adol, you share right. your screen. Awesome. Uh, and as I'm sharing the screen, quick question and actually maybe a, a, somebody that can comment on the, um, how many of you have actually been using chat GPT, but then at times it goes down and you can't use it at all. And it's, it's like, you know, well, you want to use it, but you can't. Danny, you've had it happen. Uh, yep. Daily, it's down all the time. I was afraid it wasn't going to work for this webinar. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been done quite quite a bit, and it's one of the things that I believe ChatGPT is going to be doing. And I, they've announced it already; that they're going to start charging for it, so you could actually pay for it um, on a monthly basis, so that you can actually use it a lot more. Uh, but I did find a different way that I'm going to be sending a link to the video on how to actually do it. Where what we've done is you can actually go into your Google Sheet and then have it communicate with their API so that it gives you back a using version of ChatGPT. So that's kind of another thing that you could do when the whole thing is down. So we'll show them the Excel sheet that you've created because you have a, a webinar or a, a video on that. Um, and we'll send it to people afterwards in case they want to yeah. use use it. Yeah, um, yeah. I was going to just uh, the, the quick thing to show them inside the Google sheet how it can be done, but then later on send the link to it. So no worries that Danny, but either way, I'll follow your your lead and kind of let's go with with, you know, top to bottom and things that we put together there. And All right, man. So before we get started, I should um, preface that uh, this is like a cigarette warning package, like the, the package on cigarettes, you need a warning label when smoking a cigarette. You're going to need a warning label when using artificial intelligence. A couple of things is um, you don't, it's like the blind leading the blind, because at one point I did have it create like a whole um, SEO search engine optimization game plan as a, a brand new real estate agent. And the answers that it gave me, um, two of them were borderline wrong, that if a person was to, to do it, it would probably backfire on them. So this is still in beta, basically. Um, so just because it sounds authoritative, that it knows what it's talking about, and you don't know what you're talking about, doesn't mean you should just lead with it with blind faith. The other thing is, um, I use this as a tool to help me get 80% of the way. Like I right. use it for creating ideas, I use it for creating content, but I don't use it as the content. I don't just copy paste good there i'm done with my day i let it bring me up to like 80 90 percent and then i polish it off with my own knowledge my own language my own no like everything you know what i mean so don't just use artificial intelligence blindly there are going to be a lot of con uh, concerns about artificial intelligence like it's going to um, take all of our jobs and, and that the world is going to end Probably like I, in 70 years, a hundred years, like no joke, probably like something probably will happen. But here's the deal. Is it like some people choose to walk and other people, because they can, they'll buy a vehicle and then they drive. Is driving bad for the environment? Yes. Like we're going to be using the tools because it's going to make our daily lives easier. And the jobs that artificial intelligence does take over it's still going to be the humans that are leveraging artificial intelligence that are going to be um, leading the pack. So let's, let's just show them ideas on how our artificial intelligence is being used. So I'm going to say, um, first of all, my first experience with artificial intelligence was just a couple of days before Christmas. I went um, tobogganing with my neighbor. He's four and I took him sledding. And uh, that evening I, I, I wrote down, bullet points of the experience just to, to like the the trip we took the the things that we brought along with us what we did how we did it where we did it that sort of thing and i kind of like bullet pointed that and then i told artificial intelligence to create a children's book using that now i'm not going to read the whole book but i want to share with you how powerful it took bullet points of my evening and then it crafted this story so i'll just read it real quick 
Um, it was snowing during the winter holidays and Esmond, a young boy, alongside his dog named Lola, were gearing up for their next adventure, sledding on the biggest hills around them. But first, they needed the gear. Esmond grabs fresh batteries for her walkie-talkies. Testing, rubber ducky, checking in, Mama Goose, you read me? Rubber ducky, over. But what about clothes, Mama Goose replies as she searches for warm clothes, gathering his pants, gloves, jackets, boots, and hat. Don't forget the snacks, Esmond yells as he's running around grabbing his favorite treats from the pantry. We can't forget our map to chat, chart the quest as well. And most important, the sled to carry everything with. So they secured all the cargo like Santa coming from the North Pole, using the ropes to tie cargo with, bags and containers for storage, tucking away loose ends for the trip ahead. Looking at the map, they scouted out the biggest hills nearby. The first option was the closest, but it was also the most daring. They must have been brave that day because they didn't hesitate hiking through an old growth forest. Ancient forests have 200 foot trees, stumps as large as cars, thick layers of moss draped like carpet, animals, plants, insects, and more. The hike should take 20 minutes by foot, but add an additional 15 more for the added effort of stepping in the deep snow and pulling the weight of the sled. I'm gonna stop there, but jaw drop that was my very first experience with artificial intelligence was me giving it bullet points of what i did with the kid and then it created this amazing story like that story was it to me is so well written so then i'm like man i wonder that's what then got me onto this mid journey thing where i could use images because i'm like i wonder if i can create a book for 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 him so i'm going to create a book i've already got it written and now every page is going to have photos of like a boy and his dog sledding down a hill. I'm gonna type in old growth. Here, I can do that now. Um, old... And I think as, as Mid Journey actually expands what you'll be able to do, like you'll actually be able to take photos of your client's home as it was, upload those photos and maybe with the kids' photos as well and tell it, make a sketchbook of my client's old home and yeah. their kids and it'll like, it'll create something for them uh, for a memory of a home they sold. So it's like you'd really be able to use this stuff uh, in, in some creative ways in, in, in your marketing. I mean, I just typed that out. Yeah, you're right. You could actually use that. And I'm going to make a specific video on how to do that, where we yeah. take a photo, upload that as a reference image, and then we right. can then take that and turn it into Van Gogh. We can then take that and turn it into uh, like literally anything you want. Yeah. So, Okay. All right. That that was my little experience and I was jaw dropped from day one and I've been throwing curveballs at it left and right. And um, so let's get into chat GPT. So chat GPT is free. You can sign up. Uh, you just go to Google search chat GPT. Caution though, do not go to the app store and download any apps that are chat GPT because there isn't any. And the ones that say that they are are not so you might as well not go to these third-party companies pretending to be chat gpt it's all done through the web browser directly on your phone so i just you log in on safari on my phone and then i have chat gpt so, so it's just going to chat that openai.com in fact we'll just text the link to everybody there if you haven't registered that's the link you could register for it as well um it's free right now to use Absolutely. And um, okay, so let's throw the, uh, one little test at it and say, um, act as a real estate agent. And write me a YouTube video about the top reasons to buy a home in Oshawa, Ontario. So I want to uh, highlight something. See where we said act as a real estate agent. So if I was to say act as an Ontario real estate lawyer, not that I would have it write me clauses for my offers, but it would then take what it knows about Ontario real estate law and create it. If I did the same thing, act as a, a, um, a lawyer from another part of the world, it would take the knowledge from there. Act as a, a real estate agent. So it's going to be basically pitching the whole idea of why you would want to move to Oshawa. So you can go ahead and hit enter on this. Um, but telling it to act as something is going to make it more specific. Because if you just say, write me a blog about why you should buy a home in Oshawa, it, it'll probably sound like real estate. But if you tell it to act as that profession, you're going to get better, deeper results. Act as a real estate coach and create me a game plan as a brand new agent. 
I had it act as an appliance repair person and diagnose a coffee Keurig machine not heating up. And it actually went through and created um, internal manual on diagnosing. And we actually got the thing fixed. <laughs> That's crazy. I know, man. So the, um, the artificial intelligence is only as good as the questions that you can frame and pull yeah. out of it. Because if you ask basic questions, you're going to get basic, basic answers. And you could also, if you want it to be guiding. So what, what kind of sucks here a little bit is that it's taking long to respond back here. And this is this could be an indication that it's actually down, which really sucks. So we'll use a sheet to do this, uh, to do a test if it doesn't work. But okay. if you wanted to even provide it more information inside of this to say, act as a real estate agent, write me a YouTube video, uh, top reasons to buy a home in Oshawa, Ontario, and then say, um, make it more specific to uh, people who have families with kids between certain ages. So then it'll actually take that information and it'll input that into the article. So here it is. It's actually coming back. Yep. Good. Welcome to our video about the top reasons to buy home in Oshawa, Ontario. Oshawa is the city located in the Durham region, just east of Toronto. Number one, affordability. Oshawa is known for its affordable housing market, blah, blah, blah. Proximity to Toronto. Oshawa is located in a short drive of Toronto. And so we'll let it spit all these ideas out. Now, you're not going to want to just like take this and read the script. I, I would want you to elaborate on each post, make it your own script. But you can see it's a lot easier than starting with a blank screen. So you know I want to actually just also say one more thing. So because you set it to act as a real estate agent, if you read the bottom line, it says, if you're interested in buying a home in Oshawa, please contact me for more information. If you didn't say act as a real estate agent, it wouldn't actually put that in. It might actually say, contact our local realtor in Oshawa for more information. So that's really important for you guys when you're doing this to put an act as a real estate agent so that it actually says this in the bottom as it needs to. Show them how you can continue a ca uh, conversation. So with this, um, tell it to write, rewrite this as a blog post. All right. So let's do this. Uh, oh, well, wait, say, let's actually tell it as a, as a much longer blog post. So rewrite this as a thousand word blog post, for example. Okay, do that. Well, maybe 500 for the sake of the webinar. Sure. For the time <laughs> sure. it would take. But um, okay, so tell it that and to uh, add humor this time. Yes, that's a good one. And make it funnier. Rewrite this as a 500 blog post and make it funnier. Oh my God. Look at this thing just typing it up. So again, <laughs> do not just copy and paste and use this text. So um, just as hard as companies are making artificial intelligence, Google absolutely hates ChatGPT. It is enemy number one, and they're doing everything they can to, to figure out a way to discredit the content created from it. So there's things that are going to be um, digital watermarks. So other software are going to be able to read text and tell if it was human generated or artificial intelligence generated. So never take any of this content, just copy, paste, post, because you're going to hurt everything, your website, your like, everything you're working towards. So however, this is giving you an amazing starting point where it's like almost done. You know what I mean? Just polish it off and make it your own. So I don't know where the joke is going to be. Oh, oh. there I can see it. The Warren, Warren Buffett, Buffett part. Yeah. Yeah. So it said we wanted it to be funny. So it said, um, if you're in the market for a new home, don't overlook Oshawa. It's got everything. Where'd it go? It's got everything every you need and more at a fraction of a cost. And let's be real. Who doesn't love money except maybe Warren Buffett, but he doesn't count because he's a billionaire. Yeah. So see what I mean? But just by telling it to add humor. Okay. So now take it one step further and say, um, uh, create a four part social media post from this. Okay. So I don't know for any of you that have actually done this before where you are waiting for it to spit out text and you know that it hasn't actually finished because it could actually go more, but it cut off because chat GPT is just, that's it. it won't continue there's actually what you can do is if you know there's more for it to say 
type out continue and give that as a command. So if you see that it's come with a blog post, I was going to do a thousand word. It doesn't actually put thousand words. It'll put like four or 500. And then if you say, if it finishes, but you know, there's more, just type continue and it'll continue where it left off. So yeah, yeah. they'll, they'll experience that where I said, um, uh, give me 52 reads, give me, uh, the top 20 things to do in yeah. Oshawa, for example. Right. And it yeah. only gives you 15 and you're like, what, what I told it to do 20. You just got to type out the word continue and hit enter. And then it'll spit out the rest. Um, once this part is done typing up, we'll then get it to uh, transcribe into another language. Because how many of you work dual languages? A lot of real estate agents, uh, obviously English here in, in Canada, but many, 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 many of you speak another language and that's primarily who your clients are and the content that you should be creating. So you could actually create dual content. Post number one. Tired of the city, but still want to be close enough to enjoy the perks of urban life. Check out Oshawa, Ontario. Uh, post number two. Yeah, so it's creating a four part little post for you. So um, have it convert that into any language of your choice. What are you, Italian? What's your background? No, you're um, Who, Ado. Me? Yeah. Bosnian. Bosnian. I don't know if it's going to know Bosnian. I mean, can I, can I try? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Make it. Or uh, what do I say? Well, I've never tried that before. What do I say, Danny? Tell it. Um, uh, convert. Well, I would say convert this into Italian or like, would you say convert into... this into Bosnian? Like what's the. Yeah. So let's try that. Well, let's try it. I don't know. There's no way it's going to do that. <laughs> and I, every time I've said there's no way it's going to do that, it's always done that. So. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't, but I'm I'm going to be blown away if it actually does it. that. That's while it's doing that. You know when um, you upload a YouTube video, all of your YouTube videos you can then download a transcription from that YouTube video. Well, what we've done in the past is we took the YouTube transcription and then put it into here and had it write rewrite that as a blog post. That way, it's not just the transcription; it takes it and creates a story but it does it in seconds like well in this case minutes <laughs> <laughs> uh so david actually said that he tried uh, so i i just asked it to create a clause for a property offer in interior to enable the purchaser to do a home inspection within five days and it came back with something that isn't bad at all so that's that's amazing holy moly it is actually translated into bosnian you have got to be kidding yeah man there you go. So if you've got a buyer presentation, a seller presentation, or you've got an email drip plan, um, you could create different versions based on the language of the community that you serve. And it's it's not like Google Translate. This is like this is actually translating it into proper wordage. Like it is not like you know how you use Google Translate and you translate whatever it says and it does a literal translation. It's not doing that. It's actually writing out in proper grammar proper wow oh Addo, you're gonna love this one okay write this out we're gonna we're gonna stop with this blog one we're done with that but you can see how you can um tell it to create something and then you can reiterate multiple things okay so try this type i have old real estate leads Addo, you're gonna love this bro all right okay i have old real estate leads so please act as a real estate agent and create a seven touch email drip plan, including a few calling scripts and text messages. While this puts you and I out of business. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it is going to it's going to like create that's some, pretty cool. Gonna... There are some questions on here while this is pulling up. Uh, so yeah. do you recommend to post social media in both languages, same post? Uh, so Lu uh, Lucia, I, I, uh, I think if you have clients in both, I mean, I think it would actually make sense to put both languages if if uh, if that's what you have for sure. Yeah, makes sense. And you could do um, two images on one post. Do English first and the other one second or vice versa. Right. 
Yeah. And then speaking of your YouTube, if you guys do a lot of YouTube videos and you, and you post your YouTube videos onto your blog, uh, you should transcribe every single one of those YouTube videos into text and then post the video and the text, uh, transcription of the text on the blog post. So it's just not a not a video that's included. It's actually a lot of unique content you can have inside of uh, the text that you say in that YouTube video. And there's a few different services that can help you do that. Okay, here's an example of a seven touch email plan for your old internet leads. Touch number one, introduction email, introducing yourself as a real estate agent and asking if they are still in the market for buying a home. Touch number two, follow up email with information about current market trends and how they may impact the value of the property. And now it's writing out the calling script. And then after that, it's going to give you a couple text examples. Oh, my word. Okay, so let's say we like number one. Can you um, now tell it, write me the email for number one? All right. So, so notice how it actually stopped here. In this case, there's actually probably more it could write out. I'm not going to oh, write it, it out because I'll do, do it. Do the continue because then All we right, can show them it. how that works. Yeah. Yeah, so like in theory, it could write you a book, but it's not going to do it all in one go. You're going to have to do chunks, 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 chunks. Right. Yeah. So that continue works that way. So then you said to ask it for touch number one and to do what? Yeah, right. Uh, to um, write number one as an email. Oh, finally, it's essential to comply with the laws and regulations of sending emails and making calls to leads such as Can Spam Act and TCPA. So here's your email, number one. It's writing out the subject, all that. Damn. Man, we're going to have, this is a can of worms, Ado. Like, th this is something I'm going to play with, the seven-touch follow-up plan. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You can really dig deep into it. Ben fe Ben says he asked it to write his own real estate bio and it took a mere seconds. He asked it to write a blog regarding the Toronto real estate market and it did that immediate using the most recent market stats from Treb. I'll be curious to know how it had the most recent stats because it's it really only has data up to like 2001. And it's not very accurate. So this is the part where we need to be a bit careful that you guys need to know what it is because... Remember, Danny, we were testing out that, asking it, what's the most, um, which post code in Oakville, no, which oh, post code yeah. in Oakville had the highest um, income? Yeah. And it, and it gave wrong. us, every time we asked it, it gave us a postal code and we know it's wrong because it's, it's on the wrong side of Oakville. Um, and then each time we asked it, it gave us a different one. And then we asked it, how are you getting this, where are you getting this information from? And it said from census, uh, whatever it was, but it, it, was, it was inaccurate every single time. So that's just that part about when you ask to do something generic, yep. um, it, it's not going to spit out good information. So what I like about the example we just did, where we said we have old internet leads and we want to reconnect with them, create a seven touch plan. And it did. Then we had to pull out, okay, number one, write the email for that. Okay, number two, write the email for that. So it's like, you kind of do this in piecemeal. It's a conversation back and forth. It's not you type up a paragraph and then your work is done. It, yeah. it, it's, it, it's a tool that you have to like sharpen your ax. You have to play with it to use it a little bit more. Um, here's a fun one. Create an outline for a first time buyer seminar that's one hour long. Create an outline for a first time buyer seminar that's one hour long. So it's gonna create the outline for you. And then we can have each chapter or each section, we can elaborate on that. Okay, here's an outline for first time home buyer seminar. Introduction, five minutes. <laughs> the home buying process, 15 minutes. Like I love how, it, oh my God. It really is like every time I play with this tool, I'm just floored <laughs> at, at like, and this is the infancy. This is like day number one. You know what I mean? This is like early days of us being able to use AI. And this is what we have at our fingertips Yeah. right now. Like this is chat GPT-3. Chat GPT-4 is coming out this year. And I've heard different numbers on how much more powerful it is. It doesn't matter whether it's twice as powerful or 500 times more powerful. 
Like this is already powerful enough for the most yeah. of us. So there you go. So now you've got a seminar basically created and you'd have to elaborate on each one, each piece to create the content for that. Um, ooh, here's a good one. Question, okay, type this out. Questions I can ask on a podcast. Whoop, here, here, here. Questions. Questions I can ask on a podcast, interviewing local business owners. The goal is to dig deeper on the product and service. But also learn more about them as a business owner. So I, I, I'm starting a podcast where I interview broker owners and managers on their brokerage. And um, I thought my questions were good. And then I had ChatGPT create the questions and it made me look dumb. I'm like, wow, these are way better questions. So let's see. I guess I mean, you could even ask it questions about, you know, what could I say in different situations that you have in life, whatever those situations are happening, you could ask it to give you suggestions and we say, I, I, I don't want to come up with some situations, but either way here, can you tell us about your business and how inspired you are to start it? What are some of the unique features of your products and services? How do you differentiate yourself from your competition? Can you share a success story, particularly mm -hmm. challenging experience you faced at a business in a while? Good questions, right? Like I wouldn't, Great I mean, I, I, I could come up with that, but it would take me an hour. Legit, like it would take take a while to come up with good, meaningful, deep questions. And that spits out in 30 seconds and, and choose the ones you like, edit the ones you don't like, and then add more with your own flair on top of it. So, so that's a lot actually of... a good point. Anise just brought up saying, aren't there other AI platforms that are similar on the market that charge for a uh, charge a fee? So there are, uh, but they're not even close in competition in comparison to what ChatGPT can do. I don't know. You used yeah. Jasper before, right? Yeah, there's a there's a ton I have there um there's a ton of AI tools out there right now. And if you want to narrow your focus and only care about the ones that matter, I would say it's chat GPT for text-based stuff, which is what we're doing now, and mid-journey for image-based stuff. Everything yeah. else is kind of cool, but maybe gimmicky and you don't want to be paying more monthly fees for stuff. I, I would stick with chat GPT. And in all honesty, it does not compete at all. Like none of these other AIs in terms of text-based AIs that actually deliver what these guys do, that there's been nothing on the market that's like this. Absolutely. Read number read number nine. Look at the ninth question. How has the pandemic affected your business and how have you adopted the changes? That's that's great. What? Like that's that's deeper level questioning. That's not a basic question. That's not yeah. one. Damn. That's in the time, in the time. That is, that is, that's crazy. Yeah, man. Okay. Uh, okay. Another fun one. Uh, act as a real estate coach. Okay. Act as a real estate coach and give me a 30 day plan to generate leads as a new agent. I need leads this week. <laughs> so skip the general fluff and get to the real gems. I need leads this week, so skip the general fluff. Fluff, and, and get to the real and get to the real gems. <laughs> gems are spelled this right. G E M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G -E -M. yeah I'm, I'm horrible cool. at spelling, by the way. You're doing good, and um, Chad GPT is smart enough to like, just go with you, not knowing how. Here's a 30 day plan to generate leads as a new real estate agent. Days one to seven, build your online presence, create a professional website and contact Addo and get agent locator. Check. <laughs> Optimize your profile for search engines, create a blog and start at publishing your uh, valuable content. Day number 18 to 14, networking, attend local networking events, join the local real estate groups and organizations, reach out to other agents and professionals in the industry to introduce yourself. Open houses. Okay, so. Here's where you actually get to get in leads, open houses, and then talks about direct mail. Um, I, okay, so say, um, give me low cost ways to connect with people about real estate.
because the direct mail that's not getting that's not going to get you business this week so see what i mean so how ai can be kind of scary if you follow it with blind faith right because as a brand some people might be brand new and they're like oh direct mail i see direct mail all the time in my mailbox so i should spend a thousand dollars a month now too and it's like yeah but do you also know it takes eight to twelve months before you get anything back and I think the idea with, with uh, AI, even down the road, is going to be it's going to help those that are in the business to do the business. It's not going to overtake the business. It's not going to take over something. It's just going to help you because you need to know what you're doing in order to actually use it properly and you need to understand it. Because if you don't understand it, what it's telling you, you're not going to understand either. Um, There's questions while it's thinking here. Um, how could it be detected if you don't copy and paste it? Um, so there's algorithms where um, they're smarter than me. Google, ChatGPT, even ChatGPT has a, a free tool that you can copy and paste text to tell if it was um, written by AI. And uh, teachers are using it to see if students are, are basically cheating on, on their essays and stuff. So I'll, I'll mention something on this, and that is that the more information you give it to ChatGPT, the less ability it's going to actually be able to be detected that it's fake or AI written content. So if you're asking a generic question where it spits out a generic answer, then it's going to be fake. But if you can tell it a bunch of information, um, you know, saying sales in the area have been this, giving it actual information um, that you want it to write in the article, it cannot. It cannot tell that it's actually written by an AI 100%. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, very confident of that. If, if the more information you give it, the harder it's going to be for them to tell. Tony says, imagine the students who need to write an essay. You know what's hilarious is you could also tell it to write an essay in, in the style of Donald Trump, in the style of name an author, in the style of, and you or can have it actually written. If you yeah. have kids that are in certain uh, grades, you can tell them, write an essay for me in a style of a 10-year-old uh, yeah. that is about whatever, and it'll actually write it as a 10-year-old. So, <laughs> Okay, I'm really curious about this one. Um, act as a nervous first-time home buyer. This is going to be a good one. People are actually going to want this text. So act as a nervous first-time home buyer, afraid of the real estate market, period. The prices are high. More. The prices are high. Mortgage rates have gone up and the economy is in fear. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix those have yeah, gone yeah, yeah. Uh, up and... Uh, the economy is in fear. Write me an ebook that addresses these concerns and keeps them excited about the possibility of still owning a home. All right. All right, so so this is a, a lot of your buyers right now are going to be having these concerns. So let's see if it can write us an ebook. And now you've got a resource that you can share with people that are like on the fence. You're going to be talking to a lot of people over the next couple of months that they're on the fence. So let's see if we can create an ebook that you could then share with them. All right, so I'll just get right to the meat and potatoes. So it um, third paragraph, it, it goes into the fears of high prices. One of the big concerns of first-time home buyers is the cost of buying a home. With prices on the rise, it can feel like home ownership is out of reach. However, there are ways to make home ownership more affordable. Considering at homes outside your desired location, consider a fixer upper that you can renovate, consider alternative financing options, so here where it says the alternative financing financial options um you'd want to make sure like that's legit in canada or the areas that you serve um number two the mortgage right rates rising so then it talks about that so and you can like each one of these elaborate so chapter one that's kind of like the summary of it and then you could tell it okay 
write the write write a full article on chapter one and it'll like write out more yeah and notice how it stops here and however and we know it's not done this is that part you hit on continue and it'll continue from where it left off However, it's important to remember that housing market is not always directly tied. So it actually continue right from where it stopped and however. So each one of these bullet points, uh, scroll up while it's typing to the uh, yeah. one that was already done. Um, okay, so chapter two, fear of mortgage rates and see the bullet points where it says, consider locking in a mortgage rate as soon as possible. Each one of those bullet points, you can then tell ChatGPT to elaborate on and it would create more content for each of those individual bullet points so one of the questions that that's in the chat and this is one of the most common things that it's actually used for is the uh mls description so can you Dude. do examples of mls home descriptions i can have uh right i hate writing those yeah yeah, yeah. in in the chat right now somebody paste a link to um your uh, listing doesn't have to be yours well yeah actually make it yours just because it's you uh and it'll be recorded on screen by the way yeah. we're going to pull it up so um put a link sure. to one of the listings so this is going to be a good time for us to actually let's do that description on that google sheet so that you guys can see because the worst thing that could happen is if you get used to this and you got a listing you need the description but chat gpt is down so i'll show you and we actually send you a link in a video how you can do this yourself as well but we'll actually get the answer inside of a google sheet using chat gpt can you oh, click that link for beth sure i want to see it's going to take us to realtor.ca i want to see yeah. something there you go yeah okay Copy that URL. Okay. And then um, I don't know if it'll work specifically, but tell it um, write an MLS description. Based on these photos. I don't think it'll work. Yeah, I know it will. It will. Yeah. What? I know I didn't think it would work either. I didn't think it had access to the internet, but you can give it um, a link and it will. Uh... Well, that I've learned something new today. Dan, yeah, I did so not know I that. actually yeah. I actually did it here. Let me um, just as a fun example to like prove a point. I'm going to. Um, yeah, almost... Rohan was in the same boat as I am. It's like he can't access the internet. And then uh, Rohan just said, "Oh, yes, it yeah. can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah." So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Here, here's a real test. This is just because maybe people are like, "Oh, it's cheating," because it went to the MLS and it already used all the data on the page. So, do you see the link I just put in the yeah. chat? Okay, yeah. Copy that link and tell it to describe this photo. And no, the link. Yeah. no, do it. No, try it. This is a photo of a young boy. Like, what? What? I know. What? I, I, I know. It can take, so you can upload photos of, like, give all those amazing photos you guys take of, you, your photographer takes of, like, the property, and you get a Dropbox folder of all the photos. Take that photo gallery, put it in chat GPT, and tell it to write an MLS description from what it sees in these photos, and just see what it comes up with. That is insane. It is insane. So... I mean, the unique content, oh, the amount of unique like, content that can be created off of photos themselves, even the even the photos that we take of, of the property itself, yep. and having it describe those when the actual listing shows on the website. Yep. What? Yep. Yes. What? I, I know. The, each photo, you could have it write a description for the photo. Dude. <sighs> yeah, okay. Before we go to your Google Sheet, because uh, we might lose people on can that, I, we'll save we'll save that at the end. Sure. Um, um, can I just let me just try one thing? All right. Can I just try one thing? Let me try. Okay, I want to try this. Uh, is this a picture of 
the kitchen. Come on, dummy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I didn't know that it had, I did not know it had the ability to analyze photos. What did you find that out? Oh, I did, I did a ton of research on, on this, uh, knowing we were doing the webinar. So I wanted to see like what other tips and tricks people had. Yeah. Huh. I did not know that. I didn't, I, I tried accessing the internet, telling it, here's a CSV file of information because it has the ability to intake information. And here's the CSV file of information. And I tried this maybe a couple of weeks ago and it couldn't. It didn't actually intake the information. Um, but okay, that, that maybe it does now, maybe with the recent update on Jan 9th. It, well, no, that was actually after Jan 9th when I tried it. Either way, it's not, it's not that returning what I wanted to return. So then we can continue on. Um, okay. Uh, it, well, anyways, do you think we can add another one and it'll do both? Well, uh, or you just want to make a new chat, create a new chat. Yeah. Let, oh, based on photo provider oh. appears to be a kitchen. The photo shows a room, counter cabinets, appliances. <laughs> there you go, guys. You can actually upload your photos and have a really well written description for each one of them. I mean, obviously, you'll want to edit it, but. Um, okay. Oh, shoot. I just clicked regenerate. Sorry. Hang on. Stop generating. Okay. Ten reasons not to buy a FISBO, but don't explain what a FISBO is. Okay. I'll be curious because you put ag. Uh, no, it's got it right. Yeah. Oh, FS, FSBO. It knew, right, it knew yeah. that it's uh, FSBO, yeah. All right. Do um, you want to be like a trend hopping? So what if we have it uh, create a magazine editorial? Create a magazine editorial on cryptocurrency versus real estate investing. Hopping on the trends. Some uh, You got to go get the recording. Awesome. Yep, we'll catch up. Okay, create a magazine editorial on cryptocurrency versus real estate investing. So while it's thinking of that, scroll up and we'll look at what the results were for 10 reasons not to buy a FISBO. Lack of professional guidance, limited exposure for sale by owner uh, properties typically don't get as much exposure, which means fewer potential buyers may see the property. That's actually a, a reason to buy. Um, see? AI is not perfect. Number two, I, that's not the right answer. That's the wrong answer, in my opinion. Right. It, that's the reason not to list, not, not to uh, buy. Yep. 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 But yeah, either way, ML, MLS shows it anyway. But yeah, price challenges, negotiation difficulties. Inadequate disclosure. That's a big one. Uh, oh, it's already typing something else. Never mind. I was going to say, um, give me three examples for number seven, but we're good. We'll let it. It's already thinking about this magazine editorial. So whatever is in the trending news, basically, you can come over to ChatGPT and take what's trending and twist it into a real estate conversation. So here's just an example of uh, me taking cryptocurrency versus real estate investing. The, the first um, information that when, when ChatGPT first came out, it was saying that it only had information up to 2021. Um, however, honestly, I don't know, Danny, if you've noticed this in the last little while, the information it's giving, it's actually past 2021. Um, mm. Okay, so let me regenerate response, see. Okay, let's start a new one so that... All right. All right. All right. Forget that magazine. We already know it can do that. Um, I need real estate pop by ideas for the month of February. Like, do you think it knows what a pop by idea is? This is like a buffini term. All right. Let's see. 
Huh. I specifically said February because I knew Valentine's was in it, and yeah. uh, I wanted to see if it would pop. Like, so yeah. now you can you can do give me real estate pop by ideas for every month of the year, and now you got a real estate pop by idea. Leave a cozy Later. blanket. Leave a cozy blanket with a note saying "Stay warm this winter." Yeah, that's that's cool. A hot that's cocoa cool. kit. That's cheap. Um, okay, do it again and say, um, uh, ideas under $8. Homemade <laughs> cookies, yeah. Hot cocoa mix, tea. Handwritten note. Oh, that's that one's worth a million dollars. People yeah. don't know it. Personalized keychains. Pens. Magnets. Bookmarks. All right. Uh, 52 real estate quotes. Just imagine like maybe you're like, OK, I want to do every month, every week. I want to uh, post a quote. We'll stop at halfway through, but let's just see what type of quotes it comes up with. <laughs> wow that first one took me a while to get and it's actually yeah pretty profound that is the best time to buy a home is always five years ago <laughs> but if you want someone to post every monday like a quote yeah quote mondays that's, you that's know what, yeah exactly yeah. that's what i'm thinking um Okay, you can you well you can stop that. Uh, I have past clients I haven't talked to in years. I'm a real estate agent. How should I reconnect with them? <laughs> I wrote this for everybody on the call. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Donna. See, see what I mean? So this is just going to spark ideas of what's possible for you. Maybe you don't like all the ideas that it gives you, but take the one that it does and run with it. Elaborate on it, experiment, and bring it alive. Yeah, speaking of some of the ideas, one interesting thing that I actually wanted to mention, um, I don't know for a lot of you that have client appreciation events, and when you bring your clients together, there's always a group of people who are like big introverts and they don't want to talk to anybody uh, something really cool that I heard uh, some of these people implement is something called human bingo. So human bingo is a game that essentially you ask everybody something about themselves and then you create a bingo card. And then what you're supposed to do is you're actually supposed to go approach those people and say, hey, did you are you from Italy or did you go to this? Did you go to that school? Did you take computer programming in school? And then you write their name. So it actually makes people interact with each other and makes them talk to each other to find out and fill out that bingo card. It's really cool. Wow, that does sound fun. So it just gets uh, everybody talking. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. Reconnecting with your. So if any of you are struggling with something and you don't want to pay me as a coach, you can just go, go to Chat GPT and and tell, type in what your question is, and you'll basically get the same answer. Um, okay, let's try that demographic thing for. Uh, um, what are the demographics for L1H in Oshawa, Ontario? L1H? Yeah, L1H in Oshawa, Ontario. Also, is it a high crime area? Let's just see. Actually, let's not even give it Oshawa. It should know that it's Oshawa. Okay. And is it a high crime area? Area. Okay, let's give it. Ashra, let's see. Let's see, post the code. Okay, let's say and make it L one H three Z five, because that is the actual. Uh, 
that's the part where it, the information that it gave back, I'm not sure how accurate it is because when we tried it in Oakville, it really didn't get back good information. Yeah, well, it gave back wrong information. Yeah. That's what I want to see if it says uh, about the high crime. I mean, is it a high crime area? Do you know, it's a, it's on the edge. It's a, it, it it isn't, but um, its neighbors are. Okay. So it's blurry. I think everywhere with the car thefts and all that's going on right now, it's all becoming a high crime area. So it's taking a little while to uh, to open up. I don't that seems like a technical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way, you know, we start off this with saying we're going to be replaced in 70 years. Can we pretend we're a home buyer and find some information as to replace an agent? Sure. How would you want to frame it? Like, how do you want to ask that? Um, I don't know. Um, where is a good area to buy for a first time home buyer? in and then we pick a region i don't know oh wherever. okay yeah. yeah that's a good one what's a good area to buy in as a first time home buyer in durham region i mean but that's information you can even ask google right so you can even go to google and actually ask yeah. what's a good area to buy um and then they'll spit out a bunch of websites the, the concept, though, I mean, when we think about the general replacement of, of a specific type of job, uh, whether it be real estate, whether it be anything else, I mean, the amount of work uh, in sales even that needs to be done to be able to do that, it would be quite significant. But, um, okay, so the, the first part, it doesn't look like, Danny, it has that no. demogra demographic. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it has I bet information if we, on. Yeah. I bet if we did it in the States, though, with a zip code, it would, because they got way more data like that. Yeah, when we tried the U.S. that time, it actually did half. So, um, all right. So, let's if we do this, what is a good area to buy as a first-time home buyer in the region? It will have that information. Um, and I want to know. With you. I want to know if it highlights like Oshawa as being more affordable or like Clarendon, right. Bowmanville. But even your postal code is a perfect example as to how um, I don't, as he just said, you know, selling a product or. Uh, communicating with people in regards to you know the various dimensions of purchasing a property um this system won't answer all those questions in one in one question you know you have to look at it from different angles and your postal code question is a perfect example of where the system does have limitations yeah the accuracy of information is also quite hard right so it as if you don't understand the topic that you're asking about, you can't rely on the information it's giving you. You really cannot because it, 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 it'll make significant mistakes at times. Affordable, yeah, I knew that. That's all general fluff. Yeah. I mean, asking more specifics as well will we'll maybe potentially get more of an answer. But that's a good starting point as a blog post and elaborate yeah. on each one and, and make it real of like how Oshawa is the cheapest and how Pickering is on the more expensive end, but it's also closer to Toronto, that sort of thing. Okay, create a home closing checklist After I sell a house as a realtor. I'm so curious if it can actually spit something. Damn. Ah, the keys. Wow. So I don't know if we've done the, because one of the questions was to have it write out a description. Um, and generally you don't have your listing on realtor.ca when you're looking to write out a description. So for those of you that want to write out your description, 
Uh, it really is pretty simple. Dan, do you have any examples that we can write out just giving it some information? Or uh, just well, go to, that, go to that second tab of the one that, that, that one listing that was shared and just um, Well, let's just give it, let's just give it information. Let's just say, okay. uh, write out a property description, make it a maximum of, let's say what, 300 words. What's the max count, word count on TREB, for example? Do 250. 250. Whatever. Make the maximum 250 words. Write a property description. Make the maximum 250 words for a property uh, property that's located. Uh, who? Okay, whose address is um, 5707 Full Moon Circle, Mississauga, Ontario. Um, Two, be two three bedroom. bedroom, yeah. Yeah. Bedroom. Okay, three bedroom. Just yeah, like it's small house, yeah. Just like bullet points, yeah. Yeah. Two bathroom, uh, renovated kitchen, uh, new roof done in 2020. Um, any other information that you just put in there? So the more information you put in, the more information it actually uses. Do something about the, a kid's room, like a, a a pretty pink kid's room. See what it, it how it twists that. Yeah. You've got a new room, not a new roof. Oh, thank you for that. That oh, that would have confused it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So new roof done in 2020. A uh, pretty pink kids room, and let's just write it out. What a starting point, right? And you just edit it to be yeah. your own. You could even take the mls description so actually go to the um, while it's still typing or it's done oh what are you going to do make it funny yeah you could actually even say make it funnier um and don't use the address let's see if it does that so danny you were going to say take the description yeah just take the the description that's written there and just tell it to rewrite it rewrite it yeah so if you want to take an existing agent description that's been listed before and just say rewrite that it'll do it it does a pretty good job um so here you know we don't want to use up uh the address as one of the things so just you tell it that uh welcome to land of rising moon <laughs> this two bedroom is this year brighten up your life imagine cooking up a storm and fully your kitchen completed with appliances countertops so the fact that you told it he has a new kitchen it it uh took that and elaborated on it don't worry about the roof. It's brand new, sparkling new in 2020. One of the bedrooms is a perfect shade of pink, guaranteed to make your little one smile. And yeah. locations to die for, close to amenities and clo uh, cold, could want all the amenities you could want. Yeah, it's... it's so it's take cold. that, that uh, yeah, that MLS description and tell it to rewrite it. So there you go. You can actually take your already written MLS descriptions that you guys use, have it rewrite that. And then now you got, this would be better used on Instagram, like when you post it. You right. I mean? To take the one you've already written and kind of elaborate on it. Yeah. Yeah. And always, if you need it to be a max number of characters, you just tell it, make it a maximum of whatever number of characters you want. And it does that. Yeah. Uh, write the outline for a book about downsizing. And once you have the out, like the outline created, then you can have it elaborate on each piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. And guess what you have at the end of a half hour or an hour? A basic book written out.
remove the ones that don't make sense for you and your clients and your market and your location and modify it to be your own. Oh, here, I'll be interested in this. Okay. Give me 15 long tail SEO topics for real estate agent recruiting and growing a brokerage. And while it's spitting that out, Otto, uh, you'd be really good at explaining this. Can you let others know what like long tail is? Yeah. So when you look at short tail keywords and long tail keywords, short tail keywords are the most competitive keywords to rank for. So it's like homes for sale in Oakville is a short tail keyword. And that's because it's short number of key- uh, words in it. A long tail keyword could be uh, homes for sale in Oakville with a uh, pool with outside pool or with an indoor pool or a home for sale in Oakville with an elevator. Like there's people yeah. that are actually searching for these keywords that have these additional things in there. Those are considered long tail keywords. Those are the best keywords to go after from an SEO perspective, primarily because there's really not a lot of competition for it. Cause if you try to compete for that, um, it, you write a blog for that. It's going to rank pretty well. So if I was going to put my time and effort into writing uh, blog content, it would be based on long tail words. Um, and so here for me, cause I, I actually want to connect with real estate brokerages and broker owners. And so this could be content that I would maybe post on my website. And I like number two, how to create a positive and productive work culture for real estate agents. Um, actually tell it, can, can you write a blog post for number two? But the idea is um, ask it to create a long tail list of keywords about real estate in your city and see what it comes up with. And maybe it gives you 20 or 60 examples and and cherry pick your top five and and start with that. Yes, it's it's that easy to come up with great content. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. Okay, we don't have to do it because I know it'll work, but uh, 52 social post ideas about real estate terms for home buyers and sellers. So like real estate terms would be like um, when a person's buying a home and and they're putting a a home inspection, offer conditional, like those types of terms. You could do one a week where you're explaining one term a week. But what are those terms? Well, you could ask ChatGPT and it'll spit that out for you. Um, write me a press release about a new real estate agent joining my team. So if any of you are hiring real estate agents and you just hired a new agent for your team, um, I see, uh, Diane King's on here. So they're, they're always hiring agents. Um, this could be something. Write me a press release about a new agent joining my team. Damn. See how structured and organized and like it's every time I use this thing, I'm blown away. Yeah. You could also do if you wanted to have a sequence of emails going out to, let's say, to first time home buyers. Um, you could tell it to write out uh, a month worth of emails where you send an email once every three days uh, to first time home buyers that are looking to get into the market. So it'll actually create the emails for you. You can copy and paste into your templates and you assign that to a uh, to a lead that's a you know a new home buyer and they start getting dripped. So literally anything like that's the yeah, crazy man. thing. And it, if you think that it can't do it, you try it. Ask oh. it whatever you think. Yeah. I I was on a web. I was a, I'm a consultant for another tech company, and they were on a Zoom call and they were debating about about something. And uh, so while they were chatting about that, I went to chat GPT and I basically typed out exactly what their question and concern was. And the answer blew them away. And I, I had to tell them, like, I, it wasn't my it's answer. Not me. I, I just, yeah. <laughs> let me show let me show you something, guys, because I just saved you like half an hour of time. Um, OK, I'm about to prospect for sale by owners. What are the common objections and what should my replies be? So now replace this with whatever, whoever you're about to be prospecting and, and get a list of the common objections. 
Yeah, or even if you have a common objection that you're getting and you don't know how to respond to it, you could actually say, I'm a real estate agent. I get this objection from my clients or my leads or whatever it is. How, what would be the best ways for me to respond to that objection? You can give it that objection and it'll give you responses on what, how to respond. Quick question. Let's actually try. Yeah. Yep. Is, what? is there any automation set up with this, like an API? Like, is there anything that it can automatically do without? Like, I know you have to set it up, but is there anything that it could automatically do without you individually inquiring? Yes. So this is actually what I wanted to show you um, afterwards. I was going to show you guys, which is the connection to uh, ChatGPT using uh, API in using your Google Sheet. So here's an example. I asked it here for this question. It still hasn't provided an answer. I asked it inside of that uh, Google Sheet that I just put together, and it already gave me the answer. So you do have the ability to program with it already. And I've created a video that actually uh, shows a script on how you guys can do this inside of your own Google Sheet. So whenever you have ChatGPT being down and you need a description written, you can actually use it inside of uh, Google Docs so that you can set it up and I'll share the video to that um, to that on how you can do this yourself as well and then whoever asked that question you could actually create software that will automate using that as well that's incredible yeah it's open um, we're looking at using it and integrating it in, into the coaching app and then we're also looking at integrating it into um, lead conversion for um, like actual a chat a real chat bot but only using this as the chat bot because yep. before chat bots were real gimmicky they made you look stupid because it, it they weren't smart they didn't know how to have a conversation um so just so those of you that are looking at this what you need for this is called da vinci so if you go to pricing on openai.com it's the da vinci model that's the actual chat gpt model it's the same thing as as chat gpt so this is the one that you'd be using. Either way, I'll send you guys the video, uh, a link to a video that actually shows you step-by-step step how to actually set it up so you have it inside your Google Sheet. And what you could also do with this Google Sheet is you can share it with your assistant and you can tell your assistant to do some of these things that you need done if ChatGPT is down or it's gonna be down and they're gonna start billing for it. I'm not sure if it's gonna be cheaper to use this or to use the service they provide. The only downside to using it inside of a Google Sheet like this is you don't have the ability to ask follow-up questions. So it's like you, you got to tell it what it is you want it to create and it's going to create it. You can't ask it like we've done before to ask follow-up questions. You can't do that. Melissa asks, uh, can you insert a photo from your computer with no link and ask for the description? And the answer is no, because this is purely chat-based. So you're going to have to, it's text. It can only work with text. The link in the text would take it to the photo. And I don't know how. That well, if actually, if the photo is online, you could you could give it a photo, a link, but you yeah, can't but, tell it the link from your computer because it can't yeah. read from your computer. Yeah. Write a property description in the tone of Stephen Wright. All right. Do we still have that um, MLS description? Let's see if we can rewrite it in the tone of Stephen Wright. Yeah. Oh, so it gave us back that what word are we waiting for? Okay, I don't need an agent. I can sell my own home. Oh, no, this was before. Nope, where was it? Okay, let's just do this. Rewrite uh, this MLS description Yeah. in, in the, the tone, tone of, of Stephen Stephen Wright. W-R-I-G-H-T. 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 There you go. Matt. <laughs> there you go, Stephen. Or any comedian. Yeah, you could you could do it. I had it um write a rap for me. Um as a rapper. And it did. So um I just submitted, I just sent a link in the chat to that video that'll take you step by step by step to actually what you need to do to make it work where you're going to have ChatGPT inside of your own Google Sheet. And then in that example, you can actually program it as well if you know how to program. So 
Yeah. Cool. Okay. We're pretty much wrapping up. I know we went a little bit longer um, only because this is so cool. Like it, once you actually see it live and, and how quick it is to respond, the adaptiveness of it, the, its ability to actually like comprehend what you're saying and then to take instructions and put on critical thinking. And when it puts on critical thinking, it's critical thinking of mass knowledge Whereas our critical thinking is of a limited view with like our own life and our own story and our own history. But with AI, it opens up us to a whole new world. It's like Pandora's box. Yep. And uh, what you ask, the better you get at asking questions. So I'll, I'll share a couple hacks on, on the, on the um, functions that you should know. So act as a, we already covered that. So if you tell it to act as a real estate agent or act as a real estate coach and create a, a 30 day game plan on ABC, and it would do that. Um, the continue button, because many times I'm like, give me 20 ideas on this and it'll give you like 15. And you're like, what the heck? Type out the word continue. One thing you should, you demonstrated over and over and over, but didn't, we didn't explain was, um, um copy that copy the text just so you got it on your clipboard whatever that greetings fellow earthlings copy okay. all that yeah and then um in the chat down below type it um uh uh translate this into whatever italian boom see at the end uh, when you put the two dots Anything you put after those two dots, it will. Um, so the first part before the two dots is the instructions. And then everything after that is the content that it's working with. There you go. Danny, Danny El Migulore. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so one more thing that I know Danny hasn't actually touched base on, but it's something that I don't know if you guys have kids who are studying computer science or computer programming. I've been a programmer all my life um, and I'm using ChatGPT to help me with programming with other languages. So get your kids on this like ASAP, um, whether they're trying to cheat in school or whatever it is, hopefully that they're not, but it can really help them with all sorts of computer programming issues because whenever they're stuck on anything, they can actually copy that piece of code that they're stuck on paste it into chat GPT and saying, why is this not working? And it will give them the reason why it's not working how to actually fix it as well. It is beyond unbelievable that it knows fully how to program in every yeah. single language possible. It's mind bending. So um, everybody, I want to thank you all so much. Actually, Ado, stop sharing your screen and then we'll be big yeah. camera again. And uh, uh -huh. I'm going to create a cheat sheet. So I want to create a cheat sheet of the different types of commands and prompts. I'm going to create a, a cheat sheet of um, uh, the type of text it can, like the type of ways it can respond. So it can create blogs, it can create YouTube scripts, it can create coding. So I'm going to write out all those options for you so that you've got them. I've got a list of tools that you're going to want to know about for like checking if, if uh, content is created with AI um how to rewrite it and all that so i've got a whole list of goodies here when we get this recording i'm going to also include addo's video about um, that api stuff if you want to dig a little deeper and then in the future i'm going to do a whole webinar dedicated just to mid journey on image manipulation and how to create images um, it is kind of technical and nerdy and i would have lost everybody if i showed you how i really just wanted to share with you the idea that we can and my cat, Bill Murray, is saying he's hungry and that the webinar is over. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank Addo uh, for sharing his time and wisdom with me and you and everybody else. And um, if anybody needs this type of seminar done for their brokerage, reach out to me, reach out to Addo, uh, whoever you want, and uh, see if we can get in the doors and help your agents out. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm just going to hang out while I miss comments. Looking forward to mid-journey. Thank you. Awesome. 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 This is beyond amazing, like learning a new language. Yep. Awesome. 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 Awesome, guys. Okay, that's it. I'm going to wrap then. Bye. Hey, if you want to close more real estate transactions, get more buyer leads, and get more seller leads, click this button right here. It'll take you to our real estate group coaching page. 
Also, if you like this video and want more, you can subscribe by pressing this, or you can check out some of my past videos here. Enjoy!